If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. What we want to do to answer this question is look at the relationship between total charge and the surface charge density. And according to that relationship, the total amount of charge is going to equal the surface charge density multiplied by the area. In symbolic form, we could say that the total charge Q is equal to sigma, which is the symbol we use for surface charge density, multiplied by the area A. And then finally, in terms of units, we know that charge is measured in coulombs. The surface charge density is measured in coulombs per meter squared. And then area, of course, is in meters squared. So we can see dimensionally that the meters squared would cancel, and we would be left with coulombs equaling coulombs. Now, to get a better understanding of the area, it's going to be helpful to draw a picture based on the given description. And so here in black, we have the circular plastic disc whose radius was two centimeters. And then in the orange, we have the circular ring with a width of 30 micrometers. Now, 30 micrometers is a pretty small width. And so we've shown that width to be a little thicker than it probably would appear just for the sake of clarity. And so this thickness right here is 30 micrometers. What we need to do is come up with an expression for the area of this circular ring. And it turns out that the area of a circular ring is equal to its circumference multiplied by its width, which we could call w. Now we recall that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, so we could rewrite the area formula as 2 pi r times the width. So we're going to take this expression which again is the area of this circular ring and substitute it into our charge equation above. And just keep in mind that in the expression 2 pi r w, w again is the width of that circular ring and then r would be the radius of that circular ring which is 0.5 centimeters. Now all we need to do is come up with the expression for the surface charge density. And we were told that the circular plastic disc has a total charge right here and it's a positive charge. So what we can imagine are a bunch of positive charges that are uniformly spread out across the circular plastic disc. And that would be true everywhere on the disc, even within that circular ring that we had drawn in orange. So there's just a bunch of positive charges all over the place. And whatever the surface charge density of the plastic disc is, is going to be the same surface charge density within this circular ring here. And so sigma can be calculated for the entire plastic disc, but again, because the circular ring is located within that circular plastic disc, we can use that same surface charge density. Now, surface charge density would simply be the total charge present on the circular plastic disc divided by the entire area of that circular plastic disc. And because it's a circle, we know that the total area would be pi multiplied by capital R squared. Note that we're using capital R because we're looking for the area of the entire circular plastic disc. So we have to use its entire radius. So we'll make this substitution for the surface charge density. And conveniently, the pi's will actually cancel away. And then we can plug in the total charge, capital Q, the width, the small radius of the circular ring, and then the large radius of the entire circular plastic disc. And so here we've plugged in the numbers. Note that for the total charge, capital Q, we substituted 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs for the elementary charge E here. And then we've also converted all of the centimeters and micrometers into the standard unit of meters. So just take careful note of that. We'll pick up our calculators and process this calculation. And when we do that, we get 2.4 times 10 to the minus 16 and then the unit of charge, of course, is coulombs. So this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.